Hello Internet, this is Brian Holland. I've created several products on DriveThruRPG, many of which are meant for Dungeon World, but that shouldn't stop you from using them in whatever role-playing game you play. Today I want to highlight three of them and show you how we can use them in solo play. We use them to do a little bit of world building, create a character, and then get into some solo play. So let's get started. So we'll start with a campaign starter and roll 2d12s. Red one for theme, and the white one for an essential element. We roll the dice and get a 10 and a 9, and our 10 gives us a theme of recent catastrophe, and the 9 gives us an essential element of the two largest kingdoms are at a magical Cold War style standoff after a great war. Now this is already starting to sound a lot like the main plot of the Eberron campaign setting, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's actually my favorite Dungeons & Dragons campaign setting. But in solo play, I don't want to be playing Eberron. I like the idea of using that as a main plot, but uh, I don't want to go into a lot of the intricacies that is the Eberron campaign setting. So I won't be using a lot of those aspects, but I do like my theme and essential element. Next we'll roll on the party dynamic table. We'll use the red die for the UR column, which stands for you are something. And we'll use the white die in the attempting to column, attempting to something. So we'll get a sentence that reads, you are escaped prisoners of blank. And that's really interesting. We can fill in that blank later. The 11 gives us that we are attempting to rescue an important person from blank. That's really cool also. We don't have to fill in those blanks yet, but we will go back and fill those in here shortly when we discover a little bit more about our character and the story. Also, you know, I said we are escaped prisoners, but we are doing solo play, so I am an escaped prisoner. And those blanks could stand for anything. That could be a person or a place, and we can just use our imagination to fill that in. The last table on the campaign starter is a trinket table. I'm going to add a third d12, a blue one, and roll them all so that we can read across and get a look, an object, and a theme. So we get 11, 5, 10, and that gives us a look of broken. The object is a piece of jewelry or a gem, and the theme is magic. Now is when we can have a lot of fun looking at all of our aspects and tying them together. We'll do some fun world building here and get to know not only the world, but our character as well. So first thing I want to take a look at is my theme, which is a recent catastrophe. I've already stated that I don't want it to be too similar to Eberron, so I think what I'm going to do is pull from the world of Warhammer. In Warhammer, a comet struck the world and destroyed a major city. And I think that can tie nicely with our essential element. The kingdom in which that city was destroyed thinks the other kingdom is responsible. Maybe they had some kind of magical bomb. Uh, no one knows. But, uh, you know, you can pull this plot directly out of any of the Jack Ryan novels, I think, where, you know, one country is against the other and no one knows what really happened so our character needs to get to the bottom of it to prevent a total complete annihilation of the world and i think that's a really fun aspect it's a fun combination i've not seen in role-playing game before at least not with other people so this will give me an excuse to try it in a solo game now let's take a look at my background and quest i have those blanks and I think I want to fill them in with my Dungeon World Oracle deck. This is a print and play deck. Uh, print them out, cut them. I've sleeved them in card sleeves in front of Magic the Gathering land cards. Um, my first draw here is a blacksmith, statue, dragon whelp, which should be interesting. Fisher, power stone, looks like it could be interesting. Got a sage, a dragon and mystic goblet flesh golem um, i do see some evil on those uh, on those cards for the alignments but i think i want to go with the power stone because i can tie that into my trinket as well i think if i'm clever so let's take a look 
So we have to tie this into our campaign setting, and what I think happened was both my character and the character who I need to rescue, let's call him a scholar, we saw the comet coming, and we were attempting to divert its course with this power stone. Unfortunately, we both got sucked into the power stone and were unable to prevent the comet from striking the Earth. And I think maybe once the comet struck, that's when my character was able to escape. And I think we'll be able to tie that into the trinket as well. So I have escaped from this power stone and I'm attempting to rescue my friend who was also in this power stone. So let's take a look at who that friend was and uh, try to tie that trinket into that piece of story as well. So let's shuffle up and deal out some more cards. We want to find out who this scholar is. So I won't be looking at the person field, but I am looking for names and traits here. So let's flip over a card. Eh, I don't really like the name Baldrick. Uh, those traits, murderous doesn't fit. Disciplined might. Um, Mithralan actually sounds pretty neat. Homily, not so much. Resourceful is a good trait. Uh, Durga, Baldwin, don't care for either of those, nor Gregarious and Lazy. And uh, Reckless there actually looks interesting. So I think I'm going to go with the name Mithralan. Could be like an elven female. And I want to go with that Reckless trait because that'll either be for Mithralan or for me. And that lets us, you know, rewrite our background and quest. Mithralan and I saw the comet in the skies long before it struck and thought we could divert it ourselves with a power stone in the scholar's possession and my own magical ruby. It was reckless in the extreme and we were both pulled into the power stone. I was able to escape the stone with the help of my magic ruby, but it was split in twain in the attempt and I was too late to divert the comet. Now the nations are gearing up for real war and I must save Mithralan from the power stone so she can present the evidence of the comet. And I think that kind of fits that Jack Ryan story where, you know, he's kind of the scholar, the analyst, and he has to go in and, you know, do the things, do the, the powerful things to make everyone see what's really going on. So as far as story and background, uh, I kind of like where this is going. Now let's take a look at the Dungeon World One Roll Generators. With the one roll generators, you're going to roll each of the polyhedral dice, a d4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 20, all together, and read through the different generators to have that uh, develop a region, a dungeon, or a monster for you. And today we'll look at the region and the dungeon, because I think that's going to get us a good start to our solo adventure. I think my character, who is yet unnamed, we'll find that out at the end, needs to repair that magical ruby so that uh, it can be used to save Mithralan from the Power Stone. Then together, they will go to the powers that be, maybe both rulers, and lay out the evidence that this wasn't an attack, this was a comet from outer space. So. Let's roll up a region and a dungeon and try to tie that into our setting and our background so we can see how we can start our solo play. So let's roll on our region generator and reading from the smallest die to the largest, we get a one, six, four, eight, four, eight. So now when we look at our chart, that's gonna give us a safe region which is underground, controlled by nomads, which contains the highest quality silk, it has a city built into a cliff face, and clockwork beasts run wild. So that's a lot of fun. I think uh, based on all of that put together, this is a, an underground region of gnomes. I have come here specifically for their help in either repairing my magic item or getting a new one so that I can help, um, you know, rescue my, my scholar friend. So we have this, and I think they're going to give me some type of quest, which will be my initial quest, which is find a way to stop the Clockwork Beast from running around. I don't think they're dangerous, 
They're just kind of running around and wreaking havoc. And I think that'll be my first quest in order to get my magic ruby either, like I said, fixed or get a new one. So let's make one last roll on the generators, this time on the dungeon generator. Now we do have to separate our GM knowledge from our character knowledge because we as GM know about this dungeon, but our character does not. So again, reading from smallest to largest, we get a two, two, five, eight, seven, fifteen. And that gives us a dungeon difficult to enter because there's a magical lock. It was built as a tomb or crypt by nature. We'll say it was a cave. Something well hidden is here and is mostly submerged and there's a throne room in it. So we can use those uh, in conjunction with what we rolled for our region and the rest of our story as well and come up with an interesting dungeon to you know, fulfill this first quest on our way to rescuing our friends. So let's dig into that. And then the final step is going to be learning a little bit more about our own character. So I think what's happening here is a sprite probably stole the control device for these clockwork beasts from the gnomes and he has hidden it away in this crypt which is inside that city built into a cliff face. This crypt was for gnomes at one point, maybe uh, royalty among the gnomes, but it fell out of favor because it flooded and now it is mostly submerged. It has a magical lock because the sprite put it on there, so it wouldn't be easy for the gnomes to come in and uh, get their device back. So I think he has taken this device, hidden it in the throne room of this crypt, and once our character solves that problem, the gnomes are going to help him with his main quest of fixing his magical ruby so he can free his friend. So. Going forward, the only thing we have left is to find out a little bit more about our character and then we can start some solo play. So let's draw one more time from our Dungeon World Oracle deck. I've already decided that I want my character to be a low level wizard. I think they got in over their head with Mithralan and should have gotten help but didn't, uh, obviously to disastrous results. So here I'm only looking at names and traits. And among these, uh, I think the trait I like the most is Enthusiastic. And of the names, uh, I really like the name Isolith. So I think that's who this character is. This is Isolith, the enthusiastic wizard who failed to save the city from an incoming comet. So now we have the underpinnings of an interesting character on a quest in an interesting world that we've built. We also know the stakes for failing at that mission. Those world nations are going to go to war for real after this decade long uh, cold war that they've been undergoing. So the only thing left is to convert this information into a character for the game you play. I play Dungeon World, but you can do this for Dungeons and Dragons or any other game. And once you've done that, uh, you can start to use this character and this world for some solo play. I'll briefly go into how I do that with my Oracle deck and with Dungeon World specifically, and then you guys can try it with your own game. Typically in solo play, you're interested in generating an Oracle result. That's a yes or no answer to a simple question. Here I've included ands and buts on uh, the end of those yes and nos, but you're always free to drop those. Um, I have added them for some extra flavor when needed, but you can drop them when you want to. In solo play, you also need a way to have the GM react, and that's where the GM move comes into play on the Oracle deck. There are certain times when a GM can make a GM move in Dungeon World, and I just follow the rules for that game to make that happen. A lot of these GM moves are mostly universal. You can use these for any game, not just Dungeon World. Sometimes you want to generate a monster, and you can do that with this deck. The numbers indicate the page number where you're going to find that monster in the Dungeon World rulebook. But again, you can use that for any, any game. And we've also got names and traits for generating some NPCs. Something else you're gonna be doing quite a bit with Dungeon World solo play is rolling 2d6. 
In this game, you roll 2d6 and add your stat to the roll to determine what the result of your move is. So I've included a d6 on each of these cards specifically for that reason. I can just deal the top two cards, look at the d6s, add my stat, and go from there. So I hope you found this video useful. I'm going to have all three of these products uh, linked below in the description. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you like the content, please subscribe and hit that bell icon. I'm going to do more videos soon that deal with some of my other products or maybe reviews for other games or D&D modules. Whatever strikes my fancy. Being home alone has given me a lot of time to figure out how to do this, so I will have some more content coming up soon. Thanks guys, and have a wonderful day.